Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, a lovely subscriber of mine named Beth, and I've asked permission and she said I could use her name, hi Beth, um, wanted me to do a top 10 video showing all my favourite colouring supplies that I purchased in 2020. I'm just going to move you out slightly. Excuse the maths. <laughs> It's the holidays and I've been keeping busy with all my supplies. So, of course, I thought, what a wonderful idea and yes, I'd love to do it. I've acquired so much stuff in 2020 because if you followed me, you know I only started colouring in 2019. So I'm still, was fairly new, I suppose, I could say, to the colouring supply world. Now I, I'm, I'm pushing, staying in my little colouring room, craft room, because it's overflowing <laughs> and I love every second of it being in here. Anyway, what I did this morning was I was sitting about thinking about doing this video and thinking how am I going to put this together? I've got so many things that I love that I've brought in 2020 and so I kind of imagine my husband having a full-on tantrum and saying to me, that's it, I'm going in that room sorting it out, you're only allowed to keep ten things. What ten things would I keep? So that was what I had in mind. So I haven't put them in any ranking order. The reason being is that they're all equally important in their own way to me. So I hope that's okay. But what I thought I'd do was um, the boring ones first up until the ones that I find most exciting and then I can show you some of the images that I've been able to do with some of these supplies. So, yes, this tired, worn out plastic sheet. And you're going to be thinking, oh my god, what the hell's that all about? This I brought from Amazon and it's an inking sheet where you put your inks down and then work from it there so you don't get the big blodges on your pages. But it's really thick plastic. I can wash it. This is acrylic paint from my sad attempt at Seasons um, page one. Um, you can wash it off, but I put it in between colouring pages, behind my colouring page, and it stops all ink transfer and indentations on the next page. It also gives you a wonderful surface to work on. So I now would be lost without this little supply. And I know it's boring, I know it is, but it does make a huge difference to my colouring. So no, I wouldn't be without that. It also protects from paints and you know, just other general junk going through on your on your page behind. So there's that one. So that was number one. Okay. Number two. Probably will seem boring to you, but absolutely essential for a colourist. So my M and R sharpener. Let me come in. And I'll move there. M&R sharpener. And I got this little beauty. It's fairly hefty. It's a metal sharpener. And it has your normal hole there. Excuse my fingernails. I'm, yeah, we've been decorating and stuff and I've made a bit of a mess of my hands. So I'll try to keep them, keep it covered up. So it has the normal hole there, which fits prisms and polys in there beautifully. And what was a game changer for me is this hole. So you've got the larger hole there, which gives you a stubbier point on your pencils. And this works with my Derwent pastel pencils, which sadly can't feature in this video because I didn't purchase them in 2020, which sucks. <laughs> they can't feature, unfortunately, otherwise you know they would be up there. But this was a game changer. I use it for all my pencils. And I brought, because I was so in love with it, I brought a little pack of replacement blades and a mini sharpener just so I could change it. So whenever it dulls and it's not working properly, I can change my blades. However, I haven't needed to so far. It, cur it sharpens prismas, it sharpens pastels, it, all the pencils that I use, it sharpens them. I don't have breakages from it. Because it's manual, it will also stop like sharpening when you get to a certain point so you're not going to keep going and going and going it just kind of stops it's magical and I think I paid about six or seven pound for it 
and I'd been using the Derwent um, Super Point, this one, the crank sharpener. But if you can see in there, when you pull it out, can you see those teeth in there? They clamp round your pencil and it was making a hell of a mess of all my pencils. And uh, I don't know, I'm a bit precious about pencils. They're expensive, you know, and you want the best for them. This is pastels, sorry. <laughs> I've been playing. Um, so you want the best for them. And yeah, this I can't recommend highly enough. It is wonderful. Okay, what did I next have? Um, aha! Oh no, oh Lord, can I find it? Oh, I'm in such a mess everywhere. Wait, people, wait now. <laughs> wait now. Oh my Lord. I'm in such a mess. Right, I'll have to go to something else and then try and wade through my mess and find it. I've got stuff everywhere ready for this video, but not that, because would you believe it? Yeah, you would. It, this is me we're talking about. Well, where is it? Oh, I'm so sorry, people. Time for a cup of tea while you stare at my wonderful M&R sharpener. That is embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Well, what have I done with it? See, now I'm panicking because it's one of my top items that I must have in my colouring. So, OK, we'll have to move on to another one for a minute and see if I can find it. OK, so um, I've done that one and I've done my M&R sharpener, which is right up there at the top. Now, I showed you the paints that I've been collecting from Pigment and Quirks, which are here. We'll have to come right out. Oops. And they come in these gorgeous little tins, depending on how, um, what size paints you buy. And I brought a Meaden paint palette because I've been collecting them. So I brought this gorgeous blue medium palette. I'm not very impressed with it. I've had to bend it about to get my paints in. But look at that loveliness. Look at that, my loveliness. And as you'll know, some were um, Happy Mail and some I've purchased myself. But um, I've swatched them here. And some are Chameleon. The ones at the top are Chameleon. I hope you can pick up that colour change. Can you see that? They change different change colours. I hope you're picking up on it. They are incredible. And they are the most beautiful things ever. And I was a bit scared of watercolour paints until I found these. And look at that. That's my favourite. Indian Ocean. What a colour. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So some of them are sparkly. Some of them are flat. Like the amethyst, the rock and the sand. And some of them are chameleon and change colour. Can you see that galaxy going there? Look. It's hard to get them to pick up but they are the most gorgeous, creamy, delicious paints that I have tried. And I have tried them. We use them at school. Cheap student ones. And I've got some rubbishy sets here myself. But I have never had anything like these. And so these are going in my top colouring supplies simply because I'll just put that there so you know who they are simply because they gave me the confidence to start trying watercolour and I'm so thankful to Laurie for the opportunity to have tried them um, Laurie is over at Pigment and Quirks she's so kind so helpful so that is going in my top colouring pages because I managed to do, I thought I'd sorted all my pages out. I'm a bit rubbish today, folks, aren't I? I do apologise. We did a page in um, Jane F. Hankins' Merry Little Christmas colouring book, which I haven't got to hand. And, it, and I painted the background in there. If you go to my Christmas, Colour Christmas With Me wish, uh, uh, playlist, you'll find the background that I did in there and I used these paints. And I don't think I'd have ever have been as brave. So, um, yeah. So they are definitely in my 
top 10 colouring supplies. So that's while we're talking about paints, I'll move those gorgeous loveliness to the side and um, I will bring in, ah, haha, <laughs> hang on, I found it, it was underneath stuff, this little butte. So when I started colouring, and I still use it, and I won't be able to find it because, honest to God, oh here it is. Well, you wouldn't believe the mess that I'm in. I'm such a, I've been such a slob. <laughs> I really need to tidy up, and I probably do that after I've done this video. I was using just a general um, plastic eraser. Now I still use this, hence the stuff on it. It is pastel dust that's all over it, and they work really, really well. But this was a game changer an absolute game changer and I love it because oh, see can you hear the mess that I've made I'm such a slob um, because you with these you can over rub your page and you know ruin it with this you, there's no pressure required for it so you just turn it on and it erases beautifully and you can get the refills which I just did as part of my Christmas haul so you just pull out the top and you get this little metal like clamp and you put your new one in slot it in and away you go they are miracle workers so if my husband was to come in not that he ever would but if he was to come in or anybody was to come into my colouring room this was one of the things that would have to stay so I know they're, you know, that with all the supplies that we've got around us, these things are a bit boring. But to me, the Derwent electric eraser or any electric eraser is a must. And I love this. OK, I'm going to bring you back out <laughs> if I can get it right. And while we were on the subject of watercolours, there's two in one here. <coughs> So this will, um, I'm just trying to tick off what I've done so that I'm not, so this in itself is a um, must have item. So this is my Karen Dash palette board that I use to um, draw on my Neos with and then I use a paintbrush to activate it and then paint it on the page and I like to use them that way much better than drawing it on the actual page. Um, now I know people have got, I couldn't find when I did look for those cheap like cutting boards that have a rough surface because this has rough this side and very smooth and shiny that side so you can mix all your paints on here. And I love it. It's lightweight. It's easy to come with you. You can wash it. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fabulous. So that is that one. And then bring in, which I'm sure you'll all know, my love of Neo Color Twos. They would be going nowhere because. They have been on such a journey with me, these gorgeous supplies. And I brought them individually, that's why I don't have a tin, and they're in this beautiful polar bear pencil case. I'm just going to mute my, my computer again. Um, yeah, so I brought them all individually. But you'll know my journey <coughs> has been a long struggle of lacking in confidence. And it was Neos that changed the way I coloured and gave me the confidence. So right back early on, you've all seen this image if you followed me, I did this image and this orange background, this tropical background was done with um, Neos, painted on and I love it, I still love it today, I love this image. I can't remember when I did it, I think I wrote it on the answers in the back. Um, done that one that was in that was February so probably when the book came out I'll just try and find it for you sorry um, the bees done dragon eye oh why would it always be the last 
that I find. Okay, come on Lucy, you can do this. I didn't fill it in. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, last page, typical. I did this in February 2020, so I was fairly, still fairly new to colouring and I still love this page. I'm still so proud of it. And that was with Neos and I basted the flamingos with Neos. I don't think, no, I think I did that with pencil and a bit of watercolour over the top. Um, and these are all, I've got pictures I've printed off of Google for inspiration. And this dragon eye was the first one that I coloured in here. And the blues, everything on here was basted with Neo colours first and then I went back in with pencil. So Neo colours are always going to hold a very special place in my um, top colouring supplies because they've allowed me the confidence to take away from a blank white page and get colouring. So that's why I love those supplies. Okay, so that was um, pigment paints we've done. So we've done one, two, three, four, and um, where are we? Five, so we've done five. I'm just ticking them off on my little book. So we'll move that out of the way. And then what's the good in a colouring book if you don't have pencils? And I have lots of pencils. If you've seen my all my colouring pencils collection, I have lots of them. But I have favourites. My favourite are the Derwent pastel pencils. They still haven't been beaten yet, but I can't include them because I didn't purchase them this year. So. My goodness, Lucy. Oh, my, I'm so sorry. I'm in such a pickle. Right. Do you know what I'm looking for? Oh, I do. There they are. Right underneath the pile, wouldn't you know? There we are. Okay. So, <clears throat> right at the top there are my beloved polychromos. I love these. I hated them when I first tried them. I couldn't understand what the fuss was about. Um, they, you know, I thought, well, they don't lay down any colour. You have to scrub really hard. But learning to layer has been a real blessing for me. And using polychromos to do skin is what changed my love of them. Let me just try and move stuff out of the way. And in this book, you know that I love Alice. And, and um, she will feature heavily in a lot of my videos. But Alice's skin, learning to do skin, I used the polychromos. And I am so glad that I did because I think the skin tone that they give you when you've got it down is perfect. Before, all my skin looked really pasty and washed out. But... I love it. So I did her skin. I've done lots of portraits, but this is a new one and an image you won't have seen. And I've been working on this via the postcard and I've just completed her. And I've done her quite light because the image was quite light. But and look at the, you know, how the blends come out. It's so smooth and beautiful. And I just love them. So that is why I would never part with my polychromos. They seem to work so well on most paper. Then, as you know, I fell in love with ooh, 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 heavy my Pablos, Karen Dash Pablos, which I acquired um, some of open stock, which my husband brought for me for my birthday back in May. And I've been quietly, <laughs> she says, quietly collecting them until I had the whole 120 set. I mean, look at those. Oh, so delicious. And I love them. They're a harder pencil, but my gosh, the blending is like nothing you've used before. It really isn't. 
they are non-comparable I think let me just leave that gorgeousness open there for you and they have given me so much confidence and to use bright colours so you've probably seen this before but if not this if I showed you this, if somebody showed you this and said who coloured that, you were never going to say Lucy just adds colour because it's so bright. But I absolutely love it. And that is blending with Pablo's. I mean the different colours there in the frog, how they've all blended out. It's just... where else have I got? I'm going to sneeze. Oh, excuse me, bless my soul the different colours that you can use to blend together they just are magical magical pencils and I love them I really do so they would be going nowhere I would fight over them I'm telling you <laughs> so that's my gorgeous gorgeous Pablo's and um, because they lay down so beautifully where have I just put that book I just See, I've got too much stuff around me. Um, so, because they lay down so beautifully, they give they gave me the confidence to do bigger spaces with pencils. And so, I did the background in this. And this was their apricot and peach. And I hope it's showing up properly. But I was so pleased. It was the first time ever that I'd done a whole background space. I know it's quite pastely, but a background space entirely with pencils. And if they work like magic in here and I think this is all Pablo's this picture and I love it so there uh, my my delicious Pablo's but yeah they're expensive art supplies aren't they those ones so I wouldn't be without my black widows now nobody said to me no 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 nobody said that I couldn't have more than one set of pencils so they're all going in <laughs> And you know that I, since I got the Monarch set, I reconnected completely with my Black Widows. And this is my replacement set of deliciousness that I ordered because I love the greens in the Black Widows. So I got those just before Christmas and I couldn't be without them now. Um, can I? Yeah, here we are my lovely pink case with all my gorgeous Black Widow the whole I've got all the sets the skin and everything um, and they are just divine and the Monarch set <clears throat> given us 145 colours in total I think the whites are repeated so you could argue 144 but the Monarch set <clears throat> set this there's some missing because I've got some out that I'm working with but the Monarch set really crowned this set of pencils and they are so beautiful. I've gone off Prismas completely since I had my Pablos and fallen in love with the harder pencils. And although these are wax, they're just, I love them. I love them. And I don't know about light fast rating, but for a colouring book, they're perfect. And although people call them budget pencils, actually, when you buy the sets all together, they're not that budget, you know. So... That's why they're just they're just amazing, amazing pencils. Let me put those back because I'll get in a pickle. OK, <clears throat> so what else have we got? OK, I'm piling up all around me, guys. So we've got. Ta -da! Pan pastels and nobody said that I couldn't add other pastels. I, if I was arguing to check, to keep my art stuff, I'd be saying, no, 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 no. Pastels. I said pastels. These are all pastels. So I'm including them. So the Faber-Castell soft pastels I did buy this year. So I can include those. You've seen these. They feature all the time in my um, videos. And they are very well loved. And um, I dropped them at one point after I'd made a video and they broke. But the colours in here are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They do have the colour names. Let me have a look. They do have the colour names. Let's see. Yeah, so they are, if I can lift that up, the same as the Polychromo set. So you get, I don't know if you can see all that. 
yeah so you get the same colours absolutely beautiful so you can match those up with your um, with your polychromos pencils so that's why I love those and you know I do background after background after background with those let me see if I can get this out without oh no without everything falling off um, let's see if I can find I mean most of these in my early colouring journeys are that's Neos most of these are pastel backgrounds that's a pastel background can you see yeah so they feature all the time in all my colouring so and then we get the gorgeous pan pastels which when you open the set they look like these um, and you can get trays for them but they come in little pans like this and it's like nothing on earth they still erase like pastel sticks but they're like adding face cream to your page they are glorious and they enabled me because of the because of being able to erase they they gave me confidence to use them so one of the first images I did using them was in Wild Soul and not that one my earliest so this is really early on in my colouring journey I think it was May 2020 so not that early on but this was pan pastels and a tiny teeny bit of pencil but I think you'll agree my skin has changed quite a lot since May even colouring in. Mean, if I was to do her now I'm not going to change her but if I was to do her now she'd have much more definition round her cheeks and some more highlights of of where her where the light hits her skin but nevertheless a, a, a really really quick very satisfying page to do absolutely gorgeous so and I love this book so that was that one just trying to put them somewhere okay so that is my gorgeous past pastels yes I'll give it to you pastels but they're all in the same category are they or are they not <laughs> so what else have I got left um, oh yes the final thing that I have that I must show you when I can move everything out of my way because I could not be without it now and I use it daily is this this is a little cheap folder that I brought but it contains all my swatches and I get this out on a daily basis so I've got that was my pastel pencils that's well loved as you can see uh, some combinations that I've started to put in that's Black Widow combinations, poly combinations. Then I've got my polychromos, uh, my Black Widows, <clears throat> my Arteza, my Derwent Artist pencils, my Derwent Drawing pencils, um, Derwent Artist combos that I've started to put together. I just haven't put it, I haven't made it neat yet. Um, Derwent Colour Soft. And my gorgeous cray art pencils absolutely gorgeous uh, pa Karen Dash Pablo's I need to update this because I've got more colors now there's my new ones look I've just shoved them in there <laughs> instead of yeah instead of doing them properly um, luminance the few the very few luminance that I've got I love those pencils but I could I, I couldn't put them above Pablo's or Polly's because I've just got so few and then um, my pan pastel swatches uh, these are my Meaden 48 paints that we swatched that I did the other day and showed you the pan pastels that shouldn't be there I might as well swap them while you're with me hadn't I put them in there so they're my new pan pastels, the gorgeousness that they are. My Meaden watercolour paints. And they're my old swatches that I've transferred and just not get rid of them. They're my Neos, I haven't had the time to redo them. 
Um, we've got some gouache and my pigment and quirks will be slotting in there very soon. So I'll move that. So that is number one. So I've put quite a lot together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well lots more than ten but I grouped them together. So I really hope that you've enjoyed um, looking at my favourite items that I couldn't do without or I'd give you a fight if you tried to take them away. <laughs> I know some of them are boring but um, they really do change the way uh, I feel about colouring and um, how the finished product comes out. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. Beth, thank you so much for the suggestion. I have loved thinking about it and it really opens your eyes to actually there's a lot of stuff that we have that we want, we don't necessarily need um, and makes the things that we do have much more precious to us. So thank you so much Beth, I really do appreciate your suggestion. So I'm going to let you go. The next video I'm going to do is the colouring tag of my top 10 or my top colouring books that I want to complete in 2020 and there are a few that I actually do want to complete and I think is possible so I will come back and I think we'll do that New Year's Day maybe I think that'd be a good because that's a good start to our new year isn't it all right lovely people thank you for sticking with me and watching throughout my video um, take really good care of yourselves and in case I don't see you to say it before happy new year bye bye